All right. Here we go, guys. So this is an overview. So that means uh, they're not, I wouldn't count these as official notes. Uh, we're just talking about inverses. I hope that you remember about inverses that uh, an inverse function or an inverse equation reflects across the line y equals x. Uh, so that means your xy turns into yx. Your point a, b turns into ba for your inverse. Uh, so it says find the inverse function in slope intercept form for this function here. So because it reflects across the line y equals x, I can just switch to your x and the y. So this is a y equals that, so I can say x equals 5 thirds y plus 10, and then I just solve for y. Move the 10 to the other side, so if I move that 10 to the other side, I'm going to have x minus 10 equals 5 thirds y. And then, yes, you can say divide by 5 thirds uh, and divide everything by 5 thirds, but I like to say multiply by the reciprocal. So times it by three-fifths, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And yeah, you can leave it like that with the three-fifths like that, but uh, here we go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this first. I'm gonna write y equals, and I'm gonna distribute that. So three-fifth x minus five goes into 10 two times. Two times three is six. That's the inverse function. And then you wanna show that it's inverse. So you do, what do you do to show that it's inverse? You go, f to the power negative 1 of x, so that means inverse function is 3 fifth x minus 6. And there it is. Is anyone confused on that? Pretty straightforward. All right, question 2, it's the same thing. Find the inverse function in the slope intercept form. So again, I'm going to switch the x and the y, so I'm going to write x equals negative 4 thirds x minus 12. I'm going to go ahead and move the 12 to the other side. So when you move it to the other side, it changes the polarity. So I'm going to have x plus 12 equals negative 4 thirds x. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by that reciprocal. So I'm going to go times negative 3 fourths. And then you're going to multiply everything else on the other side by the same thing, negative 3 fourths. Notice that I'm putting parentheses because uh, I'm going to distribute that to both of those. So here we go. y equals negative 3 fourths x, and the negative times the positive is a negative. 4 goes into 12 3 times, and 3 times 3 is 9. And then I'm going to show that this is inverse, so I go f to the negative 1 of x, that means inverse function, is negative 3 fourths x minus 9. You feel okay? All right. Let's go to question number 3, guys. It says for the function f of x equals find, what does this mean again? Yeah, it means inverse, find the inverse function. So the first thing I'm gonna do, so let me rewrite it. y equals x over seven to the one third. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get rid of that one third. Remember, that's the same thing as cube root, but no big deal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of that like that, and I'm gonna raise it to the power three. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So now I have, oh, by the way, and what did I not do to find the inverse? I should have done what first? Switch the letters, right? That's an X and that's a Y. All right, guys. All right, so here we go. X to the third equals one third raised to the third. That's going to be a one. Y over seven. Then I'm just going to multiply both sides by seven. So I'm going to go times 7. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So I'm going to have 7x to the third equals y. This is the inverse function. So I want to show that it's inverse. So I go 7, negative 1 to the x. That means inverse function is 7x cubed. Look for that. And there it is. How are we feeling, guys? Nothing crazy, right? All right, here we go. Next one, number four. So I want the inverse function again. So what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the, yeah, the variables, the x and the y. So I'm going to write x equals y to the one-third, which is the same thing as cube root, minus 9. Give me my first move. What's the first move, guys? Yeah, you move the... You move the 9, right? So x plus 9, or plus 9 plus 9, however they taught you earlier. x plus 9 equals y to the 1 third. And then how do I get rid of that 1 third? 
cube rooted. So whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. Make sure you use that parenthesis. So y equals x plus 9 to the third power. I want to show that this is inverse. So you go f negative 1 of x equals x plus 9 to the third power. And we look for that. Is it letter D again? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, number five. I think we have enough space there to fit all of it, but let's just in case. Again, they want the inverse function, so we're going to switch the x and the y. x equals 6, and that means 7th root of x plus 8. I'm going to move the 8 to the other side. x minus 8, whenever you move it to this side, the polarity changes, equals 6 7th root of x. So now I want to get rid of that 6 because what am I trying to do? I'm trying to solve for x, guys. Uh, I'm Not x, for y. How come you guys didn't tell me? That's the second mistake already. There should not be two letters of the same thing. That should be a y right there. Okay. No harm done. Are we still okay so far, guys? All right. Now, yeah, it's the first day back from spring break. We've been maybe a little rusty. All right. Now we're going to get rid of that 6. How do I do that? Yeah, divide by 6 or multiply by 1, 6, whatever you, you think is easier. So I'm going to I'm gonna rewrite this first. So I have the 7th root of y equals, and I'm going to write it like this, 1, 6x. You can also write x over 6 minus 8 over 6, which is the same thing as 4 thirds. See that? And then how do I get rid of that 7th root? Raise it to the what power? To the not one over what well, that means the seventh root of y means y to the one seventh. So raise it to the seventh. And I just noticed something. Maybe I didn't have to do it like this, but that's fine. So here's what I have. I have y equals, and I have this. I have I'm gonna write it like this: x over six minus, and I'm gonna go back to the original eight over six to the seventh power. And I'm going to rewrite it like this. F negative 1 of x equals, that's an equal sign. It looks like a not equals. x minus 8 over 6 to the 7th. And it looks like all of them have been D so far. I didn't confuse anyone, did I? Yeah, let me know. Let me know if I confused you guys. Yeah, I should have just kept it. I should have just kept it like this from the beginning. I didn't look at the answer choices. Cool so far, guys? Okay. All right, here we go. Switch the x and the y. So I'm going to write it as x equals parenthesis y to the one fifth plus three, close it to the third power. Okay. First move. I want to get rid of that third power. So I do that by taking the cube root. That's how you say it. Yeah, it's like square root, but you just say cube because it's a third power. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do this. Take the cube root. Whatever you do to one, you do to the other. So now I have this. The cube root of x equals y to the one-fifth plus three. What are we trying to do? We're trying to solve for y. So I need to get rid of the three. So I do that by moving it to the other side, which means that you change the polarity. So I have y to the one-fifth equals the cube root of x minus 3. Notice that that minus 3 is outside the cube root. Are we still okay? Now all I got to do, I got to get rid of that one-fifth. How do I do that? Raise it to the power 5. Whatever you do to one, you do to the other. So y equals, parenthesis, cube root of x minus 3, close it to the fifth power. I want to show that's inverse. So I'm going to write f negative 1 of x equals, let's see, cube root of x minus 3, close it to the fifth power. Is that in there somewhere? Let's see. Letter A. All right, number seven. For the function, find the inverse. They want the same thing. 
it's just getting a little more complicated, but they're not the, they're not bad guys. So first thing we're gonna do, so I'm gonna write x equals let's see uh, fraction here x minus seven to the one fifth over seven plus nine. What's my first move? Move the nine. So x minus nine equals x minus seven to the one fifth over seven. What's my next move? Remember, we're trying to solve for x. Multiply by seven. Yeah, good job. Multiply by seven. Because I want to get, I'm trying to solve for x here. So I'm going to rewrite this on the left hand side, guys, because I like to have this on the left, the expression here. x minus seven to the one fifth equals, and I'm not going to distribute it because I can see how they have the answers here. So seven parentheses x minus nine. What's my next move? I want to get rid of that one fifth. So I'm going to raise it to what power? The five, yeah. Raise it to the fifth. So these cancel out. One, well, they don't cancel out, they equal one. One fifth times five. So now I'm going to have x, and I, look, I did it again, guys. What did I do uh, again? But I, yeah, this should have been a y. No big deal, it's okay. No harm done. I'm not fully awake yet. I'm sorry, guys. Don't thumbs down my video. I mean, I guess you can if you want, but uh, move the 7 to the side. I think we already did that, right? We just said that. So 7x minus 9 close, close to the fifth power plus 7. And then we show that that's the inverse. So we look for that. Is it in there? Is it D? Okay. Should we go to the other one? All right. We're doing the same thing. <laughs> Make sure, uh, catch me if, uh, if I do it wrong again because I'm getting annoyed at myself here. All right. So I'm going to write X. We're switching the variables, X and Y. Two parentheses Y minus six. Close it to the one-third plus 10. Okay, this time I got the x and y. I see an x, I see a y. Are we okay so far? All right, I'm going to move the what? 10. So I'm going to have x minus 10 equals 2 y minus 6 to the 1 third. All right, you cannot take the, the cube root yet because I have a, well, I mean, you could, but then you have a cube root of 2 and that just looks funny. Uh, and notice you don't have a cube. Well, you, well, okay. I have two times all that. I want to get rid of the two. How do I get rid of the two? Yeah, divide by two, or you can multiply by half. But let me see. How am I looking? I am. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it like that. So these twos cancel out, and I can see an x minus ten over two. So I'm gonna leave it like x minus ten all over two equals y minus six to the one third. And now I'm trying to solve for y, so I need to I need to do what to the cube root? I mean, not the cube root to the third power. So one third raised to the third. That one third and three cancel out because whenever you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply them. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So now I have, and I'm going to rewrite this on the left hand side. I have uh, y minus six equals x minus 10 over 2 to the third power and then the last move is move the 6 so y equals x minus 10 over 2 to the third power plus 6 how are we feeling guys All right, let's go to number nine. All right, so here we go. Switch your x and y. So I'm gonna write x equals, I'm gonna write four, fourth root of y to the fifth power minus three. Are we okay so far? Move the 3, because we're trying to solve for y. So 
to the other side. So I'll write x plus 3 equals 4, and then the fourth root of y closer to the fifth power. Are we still okay? All right. Now I want to get rid of that fifth, that five there. So to get rid of that five, either raise it to the one fifth or take the fifth root. It's all the same. So fifth root, whatever you do to one, you do to the other. So now here's what I have. I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to put this one first. Four, fourth root of y equals the fifth root of x plus 3. And all that is under that. Are we still okay? All right, now I got to get rid of the... I'm trying to solve for y, so I got to get rid of the 4. So to get rid of it, I got to divide by 4. Notice that this 4 is outside that fifth root there. So fourth root of y equals the fifth root of x plus 3, and all that is over 4. <laughs> And then last, but definitely not least, I take that and that has the fourth root on it. And now in order for me to cancel it, I gotta raise it to the fourth power. So we have y equals fifth root of x plus three all over four raised to the fourth power. Is it D again? Yeah, we just got lucky here with all, the, all those. Okay, last one. All right, here we go. Uh, find the inverse. Okay, well, the first thing I got to do, well, let's switch the X and the Y. Let me switch, let me, uh, well, that's fine. X equals parenthesis cube root of Y over 9 minus 5 closer to the 7th power. I got to get rid of that 7. So to get rid of that 7, I got to take the 7th root. 7th root. 7th root. So now I have the 7th root of x equals the cube root of y over 9 minus 5. I'm trying to solve for y. I'm going to move the 5 to the other side. So I'm going to write it right here. The cube root of y over 9 equals the 7th root of x plus 5. The plus 5 is outside of that 7th root. Next, I need to get rid of that 9 on the bottom. And I do that by multiplying by 9. So times 9, put all that in parentheses, times 9. So now I see this. The cube root of y equals 9, parentheses, 7th root of x plus 5, close. We're so close. I want to get rid of that cube root. I'm going to raise it to what power? 3. And there's my answer. So I'm going to write f negative 1 of x equals, giant parenthesis, 9, 7th root of x, oh, uh, parenthesis right here plus 5, close that guy, and then close the big one to the third power. And I look for that. Looks like it's letter B. What do you guys think? Not bad, right? All right, so let's try this one first, guys, and then we'll take a uh, – try this one first because it's in two parts. And then see how much you can do in 30 minutes, and then in 30 minutes we'll come back and, and we'll do part two.